on the list of techniques I'm still not comfortable with. There is one I need to address in this video series. Details with the airbrush. After learning the basics, I think I'm still doing a few things the wrong way. I think I found the perfect project to practice this technique. Let's build and paint Emotech the Stormlord, and let's do a little bit more than that. Welcome, my name is Schubert and on this channel I share with you my journey on becoming a better painter after many years without touching a brush. I want to give more life to this already amazing model by actually showing the lightning on different parts of the miniature. I've never done this before and I'm actually excited to mess around with copper wire and possibly ruin this beautiful model. In the first part of this project, let's build the model and prepare his base. We can then try to create the lightning effect and the lightning tendrils with copper wire. After this, I'm going away for a week, so I really wanted to get this project started. Building him was quite easy. But I have to be honest, I've never spent as much time on cleaning up the mold lines. I found them on every piece and sometimes on tiny bits that were hard to reach. Now that all the pieces are clean, let's actually build him. After goofing around with the legs because I can't tell my right from my left hand, the rest of the model was quite easy to assemble. The only tricky part was the cape, but with the help of my superior intellect, I was able to do it without breaking anything. I usually try to paint as many pieces separately, for example, the head of the weapon, but this time, as we will have lightning tendrils reaching multiple parts of the mini, I'll do as follow. Prime the base and emotech separately. Paint the base with glow effects, then assemble the two pieces. Actually, no. This can't work because I want to airbrush metal paint on emotech and I'll ruin everything done on the base. I think I got this. Paint the base and emotech separately, assemble them, then do the lightning effects with copper wire. Wrong again. My issue was I wanted to have lightning also touching the base, but on second thought, I'm too afraid of messing everything up, so I settled for one tendril to come off the top of the staff, bounce on his left hand, then landing on his shoulder. I got this copper looking wire at my local tools and supply shop. It's 0.8 mm thick, I think, and can bend really easily.
I think this is enough effects for me. Less is more, as they say. Or maybe I'm just a coward. I might have done a huge mistake by assembling him and his cape together before painting. I know I'm going to regret this, but fuck it. Now I don't have a choice. Also, I might have just straight up pierced a hole in his right foot. I'll try to correct this later. Emotional damn it! Now that I have a plan, let's begin the base. I want him to stand out as a character, and the base is one way to showing that this particular model is important. He comes with this sort of platform with three steps. I'll try to accentuate that by adding one or two more steps. I'll then prepare the base like the rest of my army with the Martian team. I use super glue on some wire to consolidate the structure and keep everything together. I think it's going to look awesome. My plan is to keep this platform black with some sort of glow effect. This will be very good for practicing details with the airbrush. Now that Imotek and his base are prepped for painting, I'll see you in two weeks for the next steps. We have only done a fraction of the work and already quite a few mistakes, but hey, this is how you learn. If you plan on doing a similar project or actually paint Imotek, I'd love to hear from you and see how you're doing. I hope you enjoyed the video and until next time, happy painting!